All right, folks, let's hop into our first article, which is the deployer, deployable solar sail from NASA. Um, and basically what they did is they made a sail that uses sunlight to propel a satellite through space, and they can pack it up really small and deploy it whenever they want so they can use it on small satellites um, and basically create a sail that can push a satellite through space. And you might ask, why? what's a solar sail? Why are we using it? Um, you asked my talk question. About yeah. What, what yeah. is it? How does it work? How does the sun move a sail? Yeah, well, so the way I like to think about it is sunlight carries a tiny, tiny bit of momentum. It's almost very similar to wind, and that wind carries momentum with it as well. So when sunlight hits something, it puts a little tiny bit of pressure onto it. Um, not enough that you or I can feel it, but over a large scale, if you have you know something that's in zero gravity with a very, very large surface area, you can feel a little bit of that pressure and it can be used as thrust. It's almost like creating a sail that collects momentum from air to propel a ship. Um, so that's what a solar sail is. That's what they're trying to do. But the problem here is because the momentum in light is so, so small, we need huge sails to get even any amount of measurable thrust. So for example, an 800 by 800 meter sail, which is half a mile long on each side, can, with sunlight hitting it in space, without any atmosphere, generates about one pound of thrust. So, you know, or five newtons. So very, very small amount of thrust for a very, very large sail. So So if we want to move any satellite through space, we need a massive sail. And that's why they're talking about packing them up real small, because... If you think about a tiny cube satellite, you can't send it up into space with a giant sail on it. That would burn up in the atmosphere. Okay. So I think of it as a very weak wind trying to push a boat. You'd need a larger sail to actually get it to move. Exactly. So you to collect more of that momentum, to transfer it to the craft that you're trying to move, they need a giant sail. And because of that, when they're trying to do it on t- tiny satellites, they need a way that they can pack them up real small and deploy them when they want to mm-hmm. after the satellite's been shot into space on a rocket. So what this team from NASA has done is they've created a carbon composite boom. So the boom is the arm that holds up the sail. So they've created a four-sided sail with four booms, and that boom is made of a carbon composite film that is super thin, and it actually rolls up onto a reel. So um, it's strong and stiff like uh, a beam. It makes a cylindrical shape, but when you want to roll it up, when you want to store it or when they're packing it inside the satellite to send it into space, they can roll this, roll these booms up. And so they're usually stiff like rods and they can roll them up and it turns into a coil that's around seven inches around. Um, and to me, that's, that's pretty insane. Is the main advantage of using carbon composites that you get the strength, but you can also roll it up for easier storage. Is that the main reason they're using this instead of like other metals? So that's a huge deal. And okay. you can't use this rollable, coilable boom with any other type of material other than a composite. But the other thing that's a lot lot better with carbon composites, especially when you're thinking about something that's going to be in space for a long time, is it's 100 times more stable under temp- temperature changes than the metal booms that we're using today. Got it. So, you know, when the temperature changes a lot, imagine like when you have direct sunlight versus when you're in the shadow of a planet, you don't want any type of thermal deformation or thermal shock to affect these satellites in a way that the solar sail gets busted or the satellite can't keep traveling through space. If you use the carbon composites, it's a hundred times more stable than any other metal that we use today for that. So it's, it's in terms of packability, um, you know, its ability to be rolled up and then also its ability to be stable under temperature. It's a great, uh, alternative to the metals that we're using today for solar sails. It's like a Jack of all trades. And it rolls up like a fruit roll-up. That's crazy. Well, that's insane to me. You know, when it's fully deployed, the solar sail is around 900 square feet. So each of these boom arms is 15 15 feet long. Okay. Um, You know, the sail is like the size of a small apartment when it's fully deployed. Um, But it packs into a 23 by 23 centimeter box, which is less than one cubic foot. They say it's like the size of a small toaster. Oh, wow. So imagine something that's as large as your apartment can pack up into something as small as a toaster and they can send it up into space. That's only possible thanks to these composites. So is, is this like a proof of concept thing that they're putting out there to test the system, how it works, or is this kind of the max you can get, the max surface area you can get with the system right now? 
Well, this is the first proof of concept for using a packable composite boom. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's this will be the first benchmark test for any of those, period. Um, you know, this has never been used, you know, coilable composite booms in space so far in a CubeSat. So they're going to launch a small Cube satellite in 2022 to test this. They say using this exact same technology, they can make sails that are as big as 21,000 square feet. So if you remember, the one they're using now is 900 square feet. So much, much, much larger. Um, and that's enough to generate around that one pound of thrust that we were talking about um, with a huge sail. So they can use that for larger satellites that they're going to send propel into deep space. But they also want to test this for a different type of application. And I watched a video about one of their composite engineers, and it's linked to the article that we will be putting in our show notes. They also want to use this technology to create trusses, ladders, and ramps for lunar habitats that also need ah. to be rolled up. So imagine... Um, instead of having to pack a bunch of aluminum or steel or titanium beams with you to send to the moon, you can take these lightweight reels, you know, that's coiled up, and then when you unroll it, it unrolls into a truss or unrolls into a ladder or a ramp or a beam so that they can make structures on the moon um, using this composite material, which is a lot wow. more stable, but it also packs really, really small. So, you, you know, space is at a premium when you're trying to fit stuff inside of a spacecraft. So this seems like a good you know, technology for them to explore for other structural applications in space as well. Wow. And it's more resilient to the elements, which, again, is going to be important for lunar habitats or Martian habitats or really anything. Yeah, so this is a first test, let's say. But I'm excited to see all the future developments that come with this technology as well. As am I. I'm still, I, I kind of want to see what the geometry looks like, that they're able to, like, collapse it and roll it up. It, it reminds me from what you're saying, like 3D printer filament spools where you can just roll up meters and meters of material and store it very efficiently. So yeah. that's, it's exciting. It's, it's very exciting. 